Hi, it's Miss Ellie, and today we're going to learn about lines and shapes. As we begin our artwork, lines and shapes are absolutely important. Here is a beautiful painting by Matisse. It's one of my favorite artists. You can see the beautiful lines and shapes and patterns that he made throughout the painting. The beautiful colors are so vibrant. We're going to learn how to do that today. There are different kinds of lines. We've got horizontal and uh, vertical lines, zigzag, diagonal, and curved. This is a beautiful demonstration of curved lines. Vertical lines are used to evoke authority. Do you see the beautiful lines in that um, forest? Diagonal lines are a little bit different. They're more dynamic and they show a lot of energy. Sometimes compositions will have a diagonal, a strong diagonal in the, mid in the middle or the side. It helps guide your eyes throughout the painting. The horizontal lines are a little different. They evoke stability and calm. This one's a little bit, this painting or image is a little bit different because the, the um, horizontal lines are a little bit more jagged. But when you think of a beach, it's more horizontal and peaceful. Here are some curved lines. As you can see, this evokes a lot of energy and the rhythm is established through the repetition of the lines here, the, line, the curved lines. Lines, we see lines everywhere. We see them in architecture, in structural and functional lines. Structural lines, you will see here, some horizontal, some diagonal. And the functional lines actually help support things in architecture. We see lines in nature. Here we see what kind of lines? You're right, those are diagonal lines. And the repetition of lines create a what? Correct, it creates a pattern. Great job. Now we see beautiful patterns. This creates an optical illusion. You can see it has a lot of depth. For example, when you look here, it looks like it's coming towards you. But when you look here, it looks like it's going away from you. It creates an optical illusion of sorts. We'll see repetition of um, lines and patterns in mosaics. Here's an example of a mosaic. You see the def different beautiful lines. You can repeat, um, you can make um, patterns with colors or lines. Here we have a pattern of colors. We have the gray in the middle, the light blue, and the dark blue. Sometimes you'll see patterns in mosaics, tapestries, prints, textiles, and fabric. Picasso was a master of lines and colors. He created, he created them in a juxtaposition of sorts to create tension, as you see here in this painting. And Da Vinci had a softer line quality. You can see the chiaroscuro that he uses here and the soft curvy lines of his hair and the diagonal lines here on his brow and the contrast between the light and the dark. Matisse was one of my favorite painters. He uses lines and colors a lot. Do you remember that mosaic that we just showed with the light? gray, this is a light white, and the light blue, and the dark blue. Matisse did the same thing. And here you see a contrast between light blue and dark blue. We'll learn more about that when we study color. Van Gogh is absolute master of lines. Here we see short, short lines. You see the energy in his work. You see the contrast between light and dark and you see a use of complementary colors. But what's exciting about this work is the very short lines that he uses throughout the background and the foreground. You'll find videos on lines on YouTube. Tips for drawing with lines. Try to vary your lines. Some can be short and some can be long. Vary the width of your line by pressing harder with whatever utensil you're using, whether it's a marker or charcoal. Vary the intensity of the line by pressing harder and then or lighter on the brush. Have fun! I can't wait to see your artwork. Practice in your sketchbook every day. Bye!